This era marked the birth of armoured warfare, where suspension systems were more of an afterthought than a priority. Hi, I'm Enigma, and today, as part of Tanks Explained, we're looking at World War One era tank suspension. Suspension in the early days of tank design was really only a suggestion, in comparison to how it is these days of companies trying to design the suspension with the best ride to have accuracy and crew comfort. However, in World War One, they had just invented the tank and didn't need such frivolous things as crew comfort, as the word suspension is just French for overcomplicating things. Today, we're focusing on the early era of tank design, where people were only just designing tanks from scratch, with no real experience to help designing these lumbering beasts. Due to this, there wasn't really that much technology to work from as a base, since there weren't even that many heavy cards. Most tanks of the time, including the British Mark series, the Whippet, and the German A7V, lacked suspension. Suspension. However, most, if not all, of the French tanks featured suspension. So let's have a look at the few tanks that did. All but one of the French tanks during World War I featured suspension, the missing being the FCM1A, the precursor to the Char 2C. These were the Schneider CA1, the Saint Chamond, and the Renault FT, with the Renault having a different type that we'll talk about later. French coiled suspension was a bogey system, where more than one set of wheels was connected to a sub-assembly called a bogey frame, which then had the spring connected to that. This does reduce cost, complexity, and repair difficulty to a degree, but it comes at the cost of less stability, whereas the Austrian, I'm going to mangle this pronunciation, Gunther Burstein, I'll put it up on screen and let me make a robot say it. I'm outsourcing myself here. Post-production and Enigma here. I am foolishly, instead of trying to pronounce the name of the tank, I'm pronouncing the name of the guy who designed the tank, not the tank itself. The tank is a Motogushitz, not just his name. I don't know where I got that one from, guys. I think I need a lobotomy. Uh, this design had a spring for every wheel. This allows the suspension to react independently to the terrain, hence the name independent suspension, meaning that the track can maintain contact with the ground better and, have, and also have better stability. This is more useful when used in rougher conditions, where the terrain varies a lot with uneven obstacles like rocks, which you typically find in trench warfare. Leaf springs are made from layers of decreasing length flat spring steel, stacked upon each other and bent into an arch shape. This arch shape keeps the spring under tension and also springy, though I can't find a better word for that. The Fiat 2000 uses four bogies per side with two wheels per bogie. This design of leaf suspension is slightly better than the French vertical spring on the bogies as the leaf spring was mounted over each side of the bogie with the wheels on the far side. This made a pseudo independent system as each side of the spring could have limited independent response to the terrain. Now, the French wanted to be different and had strived to design a mildly different leaf spring system, combining both the leaf spring and bogey system with a little bit of extra flair. If you consult this drawing I have made, you can see that they have combined the bogey and the leaf spring, as previously mentioned, where they have mounted many road wheels to each spring. They have also added an extra road wheel to the front section for better cross-country performance. Finally, Behind the idler wheel on the front of the tank, you can see a vertical spring. The spring is there to provide constant tension on the track, making sure that it can stay on its running gear. As you can see here, while it's driving, the top part of the track is bouncing up and down as the tension changes on the track. With leaf springs, it is easier to maintain in the field as it has fewer parts and is a less precise mechanism. Additionally, leaf springs can provide better ride in comparison to vertical springs as they allow for more travel and more effective shock absorption, enhancing the overall vehicle stability and comfort. Let's do a brief 
touch on the tanks without suspension. Notably the British designs, such as what I call the rhomboid class, being a prime example. These tanks didn't feature suspension for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the British tanks had an entirely different design philosophy to, for their goal, where the French tanks were designed to be small and mobile to exploit weaknesses in the front. The British tanks were designed to be heavy and slow breakthrough tanks. The extremely low speed of these tanks didn't really facilitate the need for suspension. Finally, the tanks were extremely heavy, meaning that designing the suspension for these systems was impractical and not really worth the time involved. While most tanks in War War 1 didn't have suspension, we can see that the ones that did have a truly unique style about going about it, as there were no set standards. Whether the glaringly simple leaf spring system, or mounting suspension to bogies, or even making a more complex system like we see in the Renault, we can see the start of the evolution of tank design in the most basic things like suspension. Thanks for watching and making it to the end. There are a couple of suggested videos popping up now if you want to watch more content. And if you've already watched it all, first of all, good job. Second of all, make sure to like and subscribe for more content as I post polls to the community tab so you can vote on what content you want to see uploaded to the channel next. I am really hoping that people vote for the MiG-15 video next time because I'm, I'm putting effort into that script and it's going nowhere. Anyways, see ya. Ciao, and other words of departure. What is the time, though? Bye.